Hello and welcome to Bad Decisions with Jim Banks. Today is a different day in terms of the format of the podcast, but also the venue of it. So I'm actually walking around the track at the Yaz Marina, which is where they host the uh, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Usually the last race of the season. Uh, and I thought today, instead of having a guest on the podcast, as I'm just about to uh, wrap up a trip to Abu Dhabi where I've been here for a couple of weeks, I thought what would be better than sharing walking, which I've obviously been doing a lot of. Uh, I walked 10,000 steps last year, every single day. So I did about 4.6 million steps, I think in total for the, uh, for the year. I had the month of January off, didn't walk any steps at all. But I thought what I would do now is actually pick things up and being over here in Abu Dhabi has actually helped me immensely to get to the point where I'm actually back enjoying walking now so yeah I thought I would shoot an episode of Bad Decisions with Jim Banks and show that it's possible to record content anywhere you happen to be so anyone that's a Formula One fan may recognize some of the trackers I go around and yeah so I, th I thought I would take the opportunity six episodes into the um, podcast to actually just give a little bit of a, an update in terms of how it's been. So for me, obviously, doing a podcast has taken me significantly outside my comfort zone compared to running digital marketing campaigns, advertising, that sort of thing. Um, but I've really enjoyed it. I've had six fantastic guests. I've got a lot of guests lined up to, to come aboard. And it's funny, when, when I decided to do this episode, I realized just how easy it was to just get out a camera, put a microphone on, press record, and away you go. So anyone that's thinking of setting up a podcast, I would definitely suggest if you don't have the time, I would not go down the route of having guests because as much as I love the guests and, and I'll love the guests that are coming on afterwards, having a guest on a podcast episode is, is hard work because you've obviously got something called the guest intake form. So people have to give you their bio, pictures, and yeah, you just go from there really. So yes, yeah, so you have the guest intake. They then have to choose a date that's convenient for you and convenient for them. A lot of my guests have been in different time zones. So it's just made life a little bit more difficult. Actually, I think I might be going the wrong way, just looking at the way everyone else seems to be coming. But anyway, I'm just gonna keep going and we'll see how we get on. Um, so yeah, so obviously six episodes in, I found it a little bit challenging. I'm used to having data. I think one of the problems that you have with, with a podcast is because there are so many different places people can consume the content, you'll tend to find that a lot of people will use Apple Podcasts. Some people will prefer Spotify, some will prefer Amazon, some will use something completely different. You need to try and have blanket coverage of your podcast so i think when you're choosing a podcast host hosting company having the ability to get your podcast episodes out into as many places as you can can really help a lot but then understanding how you can track the performance of your podcast that you have a download which is different from a listen i know if i'm going on a business trip i might download podcast episodes to my computer or my phone so I can listen to them on the plane just in case there's no Wi-Fi. I think what tends to happen is a lot of people may download the podcast but never actually listen, listen to it. So in some respects, I'm much more interested in how many people listen to it. And certainly from the point of view of the feedback that I've received, a lot of my um, industry friends, digital marketing industry friends have said how much they've enjoyed the podcast, the format, the interviews, uh, and again, I'm not an interviewer by nature, so for me it's been, um, like I said, a really steep learning curve to have to go through, but I've really enjoyed it. And I've certainly found as each episode has gone by, I found the process easier to do the interviews. The editing still not problematic, but quite time consuming. So I'm trying to work out how I can make that better. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really love, I'm, I'm gonna post the episode. So I'm recording the video but also that the audio, so the video, what I'm actually doing is I'm uploading 
the audio podcast through the RSS feed to YouTube, but I'm also using the, the opportunity to use the video recordings to enable me to use Opus Clips. And what I can do with Opus Clips is I can take that and I can create social media posts that I can then post to various places. I can post them to TikTok, Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels, to LinkedIn, to YouTube Shorts. So I promote and amplify the content in other places other than the actual podcast directory. And, and uh, yeah, I think a lot of people have gone down the route of just having, they just have a, a, pod, a podcast posted to Apple or Spotify. And what I've done is I've actually uh, used Page and PodPage enables me to have a website. I've been able to put Google Analytics 4 on there, Google Tag Manager. So anyone that engages with a video, I can create a remarketing audience. If I wanted to run ads at some point in time in the future, which I may well do, and that gives me the ability to be able to do that. While I'm walking around the track, I'm gonna to change to the front camera now, so you can see where I am. Listening to it on audio, I'd recommend you go and watch the video. So what you can see in front of me, that's actually the W Hotel. It's a pretty iconic building, really quite important when you, when you actually watch the Grand Prix. So this is the kind of the beginning of the, the start finish straight. So this is turn one. So any Grand Prix fans like me, you'll be able to, to watch this and, and recognize some of the landmarks that you, you see when people are going around at 200 miles an hour. I'm clearly not going anywhere near that fast, but yeah, the laps is about five and a half kilometers long. I think the kind of pace that I'm doing because I'm recording this podcast episode, it's probably going to take me closer to an hour, but normally I would be able to do five and a half kilometers in probably 50, 51 minutes, something like that. Uh, so I walk pretty quick. So yeah, so this is the start finish straight that I'm walking up now. I think a car comes down here in probably six or seven seconds. It may well take me two or three minutes to get even close to, to where I need to be. So there we are. So as you can hear, I'm recording the steps through the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra Plus, I think it's called. What that does is actually records the steps and the duration. So that particular kilometer, so I'm about a fifth of the way there. That took me just under 12 minutes. Yeah, as I said, 12 minutes times five, that would take me to 60 minutes. I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit. So like I said, the podcast is Bad Decisions with Jim Banks. I've had six guests on and they've been telling me some of their bad decisions, some of the things that they did. I thought I would give you a little bit of insight into how the, the concept of bad decisions actually came about. So probably 10 years ago, I was sitting in, in a bar in Las Vegas after one of my favorite shows, PubCon, which had just finished. I'm sitting with some friends and I'm telling stories. And a lot of people have said to me, Jim, you're so good at telling stories. and um, it's funny, I'm, I'm good at telling stories verbally and I've got a drink in my hand, but when I'm trying to talk to a camera, clam up. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. Uh, but yes, yeah, so, so it's obviously telling stories um, for me has been something I've, I've always done a lot of, uh, but also, uh, like I said, I think a lot of the, the decisions I was making, probably because they were alcohol in, infused, uh, may not have been the smartest things. As an example, I was sitting at a casino, gambling, playing blackjack with seven or eight people from Spain. It's about seven o'clock in the morning, which in and of itself is no, no big deal. The reality of it was I was actually sitting on a panel at nine o'clock in the morning, and, and obviously I had to get back to my hotel, freshen up, change, and all that sort of stuff. So clearly that was one of the, uh, the bad decisions that I made. But yeah, I think from the point of view of making a decision like that, sometimes common sense doesn't really prevail. But I think it's, it's important whenever you're trying to make a decision, you don't want to make a bad decision. The, the best way to, to do that is to evaluate all the possible outcomes that you might have. And then hopefully from there, you can make a better decision. So I'm just going to switch the... So up there, this is where the presentation for the trophies. Usually that's where they present the, the winner if the person 
that won the Grand Prix. That's where they go. I came here in, in the year that we had the, the debacle of Lewis Hamilton. I was here that when that happened, I had seats right opposite the, the, the presentation area. Big Lewis Hamilton fan. So I was obviously very disappointed when, when that happened. Let me just show you here. That's the finish line. So this is where the race finishes and the winner is declared at that point. As you can see, it's a beautiful venue. Normally the race takes place at this sort of time at night. I think it normally starts late afternoon and finishes just into the early evening, which is where I am now. Yeah, I can see why a lot of people like to come here, but I can also see why the Abu Dhabi government uh, want to have the Grand Prix here and make it the last race of the season, every season. Whether they're going to be able to continue to do that or whether it's going to move to Las Vegas, who knows. But for now, it's deemed to be the, the last race of the so yeah, it's obviously bad decisions with Jim Banks. At some point in time, I think I may well change the name of the uh, podcast. That's one of the beauties of podcasts. You can change the name if you want to. It's also one of the reasons why having a website is a good thing, because then if you do change it, you're not going to be affecting any of the rankings that your pages have if you decide to change the name of the, um, the podcast itself. Uh, the one thing I would definitely recommend anyone that is thinking of creating a podcast themselves, however much time you think it's going to take, I'd probably multiply that by 20 and that's how long it's going to take for you to do that. So yeah, that, that's what I would recommend. Yeah, so I'm a bit just having to be a bit careful now because there are cyclists coming at me from all angles. Because yeah, because in addition to people like me walking around, there's also a, a lot of people who cycle around. Groups pivot again. This is the pit straight entry. So, so yeah, so anyone listening to this on audio, you're not really getting the full benefit from this particular episode. I would definitely recommend this episode you uh, watch it on video and if you want to go back to listening to audio after that then probably normal service will be resumed at that point so but yeah but i'd be very curious on every podcast episode that that i've produced so far if you go to the website which is podcast.bdwjb.com on every episode you'll see that there is actually a, a place for facebook comments and at the bottom right hand side on each page there is a recorder for microphones so you can leave a voicemail i would love to know what your favorite digital marketing podcasts are uh, so i can try and understand what it is that's made them as popular as they are so some of the ones that i've been following people like amy porterfield she's obviously got a huge following and really professional in terms of the way she produces the whole thing but yeah but i'd, I'd love to know who else you listen to um, and why you listen to them and what it is you like about them so please leave me a message or leave me a comment and i promise you i'll respond to it when i'm able to for this particular episode it'll be podcast.bdwjb.com forward slash seven that'll be the episode number and and obviously from there all the show notes and everything else will be there so i mentioned earlier about opus clips that will be in the show notes as well as the pod page which is my hosting company so yeah so make sure you do that. Make sure you check those out. Is the, the W Hotel a little bit more up close and personal? Yeah, I don't, I've actually been in there for drinks, never actually stayed there. Beautiful hotel inside and obviously very expensive at the time that the Grand Prix itself is on. At some point in time, I may well find the opportunity to stay there just to give you some idea of context. The weather in Abu Dhabi at the moment is probably about 22 degrees centigrade, which I think is probably in the mid 70s compared to the UK where I live. It's probably five or six degrees centigrade, which is probably in the low 40s, maybe high 30s. So clearly being here, I can walk in shorts, t-shirt and uh, not have to worry about getting cold. And that was part of the reason of coming over here is to enable me not to have to worry about the winters. And I made a bit of a, a kind of a calculated punt that once I paid for the flight to be here, got a member of my family who lives here so I've been able to stay with them so we've been able to um, not have to pay the money that we would normally pay for heating at home in the UK and we've been able to go out for a few dinners here and that sort of thing so it's probably like the worst math that anyone's ever done but that was my rationale behind why I thought that would be a good thing to do what's really interesting is that it's obviously a lot of people of different levels that's the beauty of things like podcasting you've got people like me who are six episodes in you've got other people who are probably hundreds and hundreds of episodes in so they're much more likely to have success with every episode because they've done the heavy lifting at the beginning interestingly enough i saw somebody post 
that Alex Hormozzi, who's one of the most popular influencers at the moment, when he first started his podcast about 12 months in, he only had a couple of thousand downloads. Again, I'm nowhere near that number at the moment, but I'm hoping to, uh, to with consistency, persistence, keep things going, and eventually get to the point where every episode I can push out will get a couple of thousand downloads, and I can start leveraging that, that success into highlighting and showcasing the people who really, this for me, the reason for wanting to have a pod is to give aspiring digital marketers the opportunity and the platform to be able to to talk about some of the things that they've been doing and what they're looking to do in the future and use my platform to enable them to get more visibility into what it is that they're working on. So call this a, a mid-podcast ad break but if you are an aspiring digital marketer and particularly if you're a female digital marketer I would love to hear from you. Leave me a voicemail. Total two kilometers. 23 minutes 40 seconds steps 2137 steps so there we are 23 40 for the first two kilometers i think that kilometer was a little bit quicker but still pretty slow compared to my normal walking pace but fortunately because of all the the work that i put in last year i'm not actually out of breath which is good i think had i been doing this at this time last year might have been a different story altogether so this corner up here this is the corner as you come through. This is where the W, the other side of the W is, goes through under the bridge there. So this is the corner where famously Max Verstappen overtook Lewis Hamilton to enable him to go on and become the world champions. So yeah, like I said, hugely disappointing for me as a Lewis Hamilton fan, but there we go. That is what it is. You can't complain. You can't dispute how dominant Red Bull have been since then and I'm not going to. So yeah, so let me bring me back here. So yeah, I think from the point of view of podcasting, I think one of the things I've realized is the whole process start to finish was far more elaborate than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be something as simple as, hey, let me get a camera. Let me get a couple of microphones. Let me send a link out to get people on the other end of the conversation, have a few questions, talk some shit and be done. And clearly that has not been the case. It's been a lovely experience that I've really thoroughly enjoyed it. But yeah, I think it has been a much steeper learning curve than I thought it was going to be. And yeah, I think it's one that I'm definitely gonna persevere with. I've swapped my 10,000 steps a day, every day to producing content for the podcast every day in addition to running the facebook forum that i have for elite media buyers and also for the agency that i have which is called space media which is a growth agency where i help businesses that want to scale a business typically from one to five million and the reason i chose that number rather than something higher is i didn't really want to be working with big companies that's not in my wheelhouse. I did an episode recently with Tim Ash where I explained the rationale behind that, why I didn't want to work with big companies, why I didn't want to grow a 50 to 100 person agency, because if I did that, then what I'm doing now, which is being able to be in a foreign country with my wife, enjoying the, uh, the sunshine, I just wouldn't be able to do that because I'd have, be having to go into the office to open it up, to change the toilet paper and when we run out of coffee and tea, go to the shops to buy coffee and tea and there'd be HR issues and things like that. And really, I've been there and I've done that. And if you like, that was probably one of my, my bad decisions. If you like, back in the day was, rather than bringing somebody in to look after all that sort of stuff, I thought I'll be the person that looks after all that. And I realized just how little I enjoyed HR, how much I, enjoyed, I didn't enjoy managing people really. It's not, I mean, it's something I've, I've done for many years but it's really not something I've got great enjoyment out of. I've got great enjoyment out of digital marketing, running paid ads and generating conversions for clients that I work with and, and I've considered that to be my if you like my superpower, my expertise, but not doing performance reviews and stuff like that. That's just not really my sweet spot. Yeah, so I think if I can give anybody tips on how to run a business, I would find the things that you're good at and outsource everything else and just focus on the things that you're good at and trust the people that you hire to do the, the work that you don't like 
like I said, it's not a abdication where you just, it's still got to be done. It's got to be done properly, but it's just, if it's done by you, it'll probably be done badly. And I think it's much better for you to focus on the things that you're good at. And as I said, just get other people to do the things that they're good at. And then as a result of that, your business should be producing great results. Like I said, I have lots of friends that are running big agencies, happy to run big agencies. I take my hat off to them, fantastic, good for them. Not for me, but yeah, I think you just gotta find your happy place, your comfort zone, your swim lane, if that's what you wanna call it, and stay in it. And don't worry about what other people are doing in their lanes because they're not in your lane, they're doing their own thing. So like I said, all these people that are cycling around, some of them are complete novice cyclists. They don't have bikes. They've just hired one when they got here. Other people are riding bikes that cost tons and tons of money. And ultimately all what they're doing is they're all exercising. They're all doing what they think is something that's going to fill their hearts with joy. And that's all you can do. Like I said, when I started the walking, I wanted to just be healthier. And as a result of it, initially I did lose a ton of weight, I lost five stone, 70 pounds, but I put probably 50 of that back on. So I said to my wife, when we get back to the UK, we need to get, we call it, getting back with the program. So that will be my focus and attention on getting that 50 pounds off again, because I'm not comfortable carrying the extra lumber. That was part of the reason why I was having hip and knee problems because I was putting more stress on the joints than I really needed to. So yes, I think sometimes those sorts of things creep up on you. It can be a bit silently. You take a look in the mirror and then before you know it, you've put on 20 pounds without even blinking an eye. So yes, I think it's something that it's important for you to monitor it regularly. And if you need to readjust the path that you're on, it's much easier to do it when you've taken a small deviation then when you've taken a big deviation and that's something I wish I'd listened to my own advice back in the day and hadn't waited until again yeah, I, th I think it was one of those I knew that I put the weight on but I just chose to ignore it so I'm not choosing to uh, I'm not going to be ignoring it anymore uh, yeah so let me just show you where we are now Diff so this is I'm not quite sure where this is but yeah it's like I said this is a beautiful track and I always thought it was a complete white elephant that they had this track that they had a race on and then did nothing with it. But pretty much every day they have people come out cars and they do driving experience days. So they'll come and they'll drive a performance car around the track. And obviously all these people that are walking and cycling around here are getting the benefits of that. I don't think it actually costs any money to do it. You just need a card to, to be able to do that. And I think it's only open on certain days of the week. But yeah, I think a lot of people will do that. They typically come in the evening when it starts to get a little bit cooler. Certainly Abu Dhabi as a country can get pretty warm during the day, more so in the summer. It can get up into the sort of high 90s, low 100s consistently. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people leave the Middle East, UAE, in the summer and go back to the UK because it's cooler at that point when they go home. So yeah, so if you were planning on coming out to somewhere like here, actually coming out here in the summer, you would think it would be expensive. In actual fact, it's probably one of the cheapest times of the year to come for that very reason, for the fact that most of the hotels are empty because it's too hot, people can't bear the heat so they just tend not to come to, uh, to be here. A little bit of a travel tip there for those of you who are maybe looking at um, somewhere to go. Funny enough, just before coming out here, uh, a friend of mine sent me a message on, um, on Slack basically saying he was thinking of taking his wife to Dubai and what, Dubai and what did I think? I was up in Dubai at the weekend with my wife. Uh, we stayed on the QE2 which is an old cruise liner which has been converted into a hotel. I think it cost $100 million to convert it into a hotel. It's quite a quirky uh, hotel experience for anyone that, that kind of has that. So yeah, so if you come to Dubai, you're looking for a 
where can I go to get a quirky experience? That is definitely one of the, uh, the quirkier places that you can go to have a, a kind of fun experience. And funny enough, I think as a hotel, it's clearly not that lavish because it's a converted ship, but it is actually quite cheap compared to other hotels in Dubai. But that wasn't the reason that we were staying on there. It was just because we wanted to go and experience something that was a little bit different and a little bit fun. And it was definitely that. So yes, I've got, obviously I've been passed by Total lots of runners. Kilometers. 35 minutes, nine seconds. Steps, 3,160 steps. So there we are, 35 minutes for 3,100 steps and three kilometers, which is about to probably just under two miles. So yes, I'm going pretty slow, but as I mentioned, I'm recording this podcast episode, so it was always gonna be a slow walk. I thought I would try and kill two birds with one stone. Bit of exercise, and also make a podcast episode that I can upload and then use for, uh, for the purposes of making sure there's consistency in, in, in output. Uh, and then when I get back to the UK, I'll have more guests and we can go from there. So I'm going to finish off the, the podcast episode now. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed talking to you on my own. Um, maybe at some point in time, I'll maybe do the same thing again, but maybe from a different location. Um, yeah, and uh, for, for everyone that has given me feedback on the uh, podcast, thank you. I really appreciate your love and care and I uh, look forward to producing more content for you in the future. And for those of you who may have never heard of me before, my name is Jim Banks. I'm a digital marketer. I've been doing it for 25 years, based in the UK. And uh, my whole reason for working now is to give back to the community has been fantastic to me in giving me so much joy and happiness since I started in it in 1999. So yeah, so I'll leave the podcast at this point and uh, look forward to speaking to you on the next episode of Bad Decisions with Jim Banks. Peace out.